So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Andrei Vlasovsky, and I'm going to talk about how you can benefit from type hints. So, uh, I come, come from the city called St. Petersburg. It's a big city in Russia, and I work for a company called JetBrains, and I'm one of the developers of the ID called PyCharm. Uh, also, I've been contributing to this new PEP 484 called Type Hints, and uh, I'm very glad that uh, it will be the part of Python 3.5. Uh, I would really like to say thank you to the authors of this PEP, Guido, uh, Yuka, and Lukas, and also to the BDFL for this PEP, Mark, uh, who actually accepted this PEP. So, what are type hints? Type hints are like uh, any information provided by the user about the types in their programs, like types of function, uh, function parameters, types of uh, class attributes, and so on. And the PEP 484 uh, defines the formal nota notation for type hints. So, what I'm going to be talking about uh, here is basically the motivation behind type hints in Python and how you can get started with them. Uh, and uh, also I will talk about uh, the best practices for annotating your code with type hints. What is out of the scope here is uh, the overview of the type system. Uh, what uh, kind of types can you write in your code? And also I want uh, walk through the whole typing module, uh, and this is out of the scope here. Probably some of you uh, have visited the talk by Guido and Rossum earlier, and uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, who of you has actually listened to Guido about type hints? Please raise your hands. Great, almost everyone. And how many of you have actually looked into this document, pep 4 all right, about two thirds, I guess. And have you ever had a chance to actually play with type annotations in your code? Just a couple of you, great. So you, are, uh, you came to the right talk for you, and uh, yeah, I'm very glad. Uh, all right, so type hints in Python, uh, they are used to be informal. So basically, uh, Python programmers uh, would define type hints inside their doc strings. Uh, and those definitions were us usually given in an informal language or in a natural language such as English, for example. Here's a piece of documentation from the standard library about the filter function. As you can see, uh, there are lots of words highlighted in blue that actually refer to type hints. And the PEP 44 basically defines the formal notation. And as you can see, uh, this is the uh, type hints for the same filter function, and they are a lot of uh, a lot dense. And if you have a bit of understanding of what type hints are, this notation, I think, is much more clear. And um, just one thing I want to uh, remind you from Guido's talk is that Python will always be a dynamic language, and that ty type hints are completely optional. All right, so. From my perspective, the main benefits uh, of type annotations is readability. Type hints are all about readability for both humans and tools. What do I mean by readability by humans? Uh, actually, I mean documentation. Uh, documentation with type hints uh, is a lot more easier to grasp if you al already have some fam familiarity with type hints than lengthy uh, natural language descriptions. And by readability by tools, I mean uh, uh, the possibility of creating type checkers and linters for Python, and also the tools that help you write code, for example, for code completion. Type information is crucial for those kinds of tools, and uh, that's what we are going to talk about in, in this talk. So, let's start with type hints for tools. What tools do support type hints right now? Actually, I know only two of them, is the MyPy, the original tool that uh, was the main inspiration for this PEP 484, uh, written by Yuko Lectosalo, and uh, PyCharm. Uh, and I should know that we have a free community edition of PyCharm that is completely open sourced under the Apache 2 license, and all our type inference and type analysis code and stuff like that is also open source. 
uh, PyCharm 2.5 that was released uh, earlier this year has already some support, some basic support for type hints, but the PEP wasn't ready yet at the time we, are we were re releasing PyCharm. So uh, only some parts of the specifications are supported. And PyCharm 5 uh, is coming this fall and it will include full support for type hints, uh, PEP for it form. Uh, several other developers of uh, code analysis tools, like PyLint, have already announced that they are going to support type hints in their tools. And for PyLint, I guess the, um, uh, it will support it in 2016. All right, so let's uh, pick an example for um, understanding type hints. And as an example, I've chosen the library called Elementary, it's a part of the standard Python library, and uh, I would like to ask you how many of you are familiar with elementary? Please raise your hands. Almost everyone, right. For uh, those of you who are not familiar uh, with it, it's a library for handling XML data, for parsing XML, and for dealing with it uh, with an API that is nicer than the standard DOM API. Uh, so let's start with this library and let's write some type hints in order to see the benefits on the, of them. And just for the sake of brevity, let's call it Itri. It's our own modified versions of, uh, version of elementary. Later on, I will show you how to deal with the, the library without modifying it. So here's an, a little example uh, of using the elementary library and uh, if you are quite familiar with the API of this library, probably you would notice some errors here. Uh, does every, any, everybody, anybody see the problem here? What's wrong here? Sorry? Please speak louder. Sorry, can hear you? Yeah, yeah, byte literal, right, that's it. So basically when you run this code, uh, the result would be, uh, will be a type error because um, elementary cannot serialize binary data. Uh, by the way, there is another error here. Uh, you cannot specify integers as values of XML attributes. So yes, uh, you have to basically run this program in order to find this error if you are not that familiar with uh, the elementary API. And as uh, we will see right now, uh, the type checker tools will find this, error, this kind of errors for you automatically with a little bit of help from type hints. So let's start annotating just the constructor of the element class. Uh, here we add the stir annotation for the tag parameter. We expect it to be a string, not a byte string. And uh, we expect the attribute parameter to be a dictionary of uh, integer, uh, sorry, string keys and string values. Um, so it's a generic type. All right, and with the help of this type uh, hints, what we uh, can get from tools. Here is the output of, two, the, of those two tools. PyCharm will underline the problematic elements with this uh, yellow squiggly line, and it basically says that it expects the type string, but it goes bytes instead. And the MyPy, being a command line tool, outputs basically the same information, but only in the textual form. All right, so type hints are already somewhat useful. Let's continue annotating the API of the elementary library. Uh, most type hints you will uh, write in practice are quite simple. For example, the register namespace function accepts just two strings and returns nothing. Basically, there is no return statement in this function, so we annotate it with the return type none. Uh, and the element and the is element function over there, uh, it accepts basically any value and checks if it is actually an XML element. So we specify the return uh, the parameter type uh, of the element parameter as any. Uh, some type hints are a little bit more complex. Uh, for example, below we are using some genetic types. Uh, the iter function returns an iterator over elements and you will notice this string quotation Guido has mentioned in his talk because we are refer referring to the class itself while we are still defining it. And uh, the iter text function returns just an iterator or strings. All right, so with the help, uh, suppose we un have annotated the whole API of the elementary. What could we get for, from that using the tools? Here's uh, a little piece of code in PyCharm. Uh, 
let's find out what this program does. Uh, it's a program that creates an XML element uh, inside the H1 tag, so it's under HTML, uh, that contains the string uppercase. So heading, the heading uh, variable is uh, an element with the upper text hello in H1. Uh, and then we print basically the text of the first node, textual node of this element by iterating over text nodes, sub elements inside this uh, XML element H1 and print the string world here. So the result would be uppercase hello comma world exclamation mark. And uh, actually there is a problem in this code that PyCharm would notice with the help of those type hints. And in order to find out what this problem is and why PyCharm will find it, um, we should think of an algorithm called type inference here. So let's think as the type inference, inferencer would think uh, about this program. We have to find out if the indexing operator, the square bracket operator, is available on the result of the iter text function. So let's find uh, what iter text returns, but we still don't know what, uh, what, uh, which class contains this iter text method, because we don't know the class of the heading uh, uh, variable. So we need to go and look through and look up the definition of the heading variable. It's right there. Uh, on the previous line, and it's, uh, it is assigned uh, a return value of the uppercase heading function. And note that uppercase heading has no type annotations whatsoever, but uh, uh, a type checker would try to infer the, the return type of the uh, uppercase heading function. In this case, uh, it returns a uh, uh, local element variable, and uh, it is assigned a value of uh, basically calling a constructor on the, this element tree dot element class. So we know that the el local element variable is actually a variable of type element. It's an information inferenced, uh, inferenced from this very basic uh, example. And we know that the return value of the uppercase heading function would be uh, element. So heading variable, the global variable heading, is also of type element. And let's go to the previous slide to find out what iter text on element uh, is returning according to our written type annotations. Uh, here it is, it's the last line on the slide. We have annotated uh, iter text to return the iterator over strings. Uh, as, uh, as, would, as many of you would probably, uh, are probably do probably know, the iterator uh, uh, it's an abstract base class, and it defines only two methods. It's the dunder iter method and dunder next. So there is no uh, dunder get item uh, method that is available on the iterator. So we cannot access, uh, uh, have access to the elements of the iterator by using the indexing operator. So it is clearly an error. And PyCharm, with the help of some, some type inference, quite basic type inference in this example, but we could come up with quite more advanced ones, uh, can uh, infer, uh, can find this kind of error. And know that we don't have to annotate any function. Uh, some annotations would be enough in most cases. Another good thing you can get from type hints is code completion. So. In PyCharm, we uh, offer so-called context-sensitive code completion, meaning that uh, it is based on the in, uh, actual type of, of the variable. It shows only methods and attributes of the, of the type of the variable. So uh, th this is the same iter text function. We are iterating over an iterator of strings, and we have invoked code completion for the uh, iterable variable uh, we are iterating over. Uh, and we know that uh, uh, its type is string, so, so we show the methods of the string class and the methods of uh, their, uh, its uh, superclasses. So those are the benefits you can get from tools. Now let's switch to uh, benefits from the documentation. Uh, often documentation uh, could become quite wordy if you are carefully writing down all the types uh, of your uh, function definition in English. 
here's in is a real world example from the standard library documentation for the function called common uh, of the elementary module. And uh, not only is it wordy, but it also contains an actual error here, uh, marked in red. It says that we can pass a by string in here. But as you can see from the example below, if we are actually pass the by string literal and then try to serialize it, it will print the by string literal uh, as its wrapper, B, quotation marks, and so on. This is crazy. This is ex no, absolutely not what you are trying to do here. So either the documentation is written badly and uh, not tested, or the implementation uh, has a bug in it. Something is definitely wrong here. Or maybe uh, I just don't get the English text here. I'm a foreign speaker, so <laughs> maybe. All right. Uh, so. Um, what uh, would be, um, would it be better if we annotated uh, this function with type, type hints uh, and used just the doc string from, from the library? I did uh, exactly this here. I used the Sphinx tool, the famous uh, documentation generator for Python, with the autodoc doc extension. Autodoc extension can extract uh, the um, doc strings from your code as well as type annotations. And from my point of view, this piece of documentation is much more clear, and it uh, explains what is going on here uh, using better, and more, more formally defined syntax. And I'm uh, more, uh, I'm happier with this kind of documentation than this lengthy, um, uh, cumbersome documentation that has errors. The, uh, know that uh, you can actually you, uh, check your type hints in some kind of test. You can write a test suite for your code and run a static type checker in order to check function annotations, but you cannot check the English, natural language documentation. This is the idea. All right, so now I'll go in, I'm going to uh, give some uh, tips about how to actually use uh, type hints in order to be productive with them. And the, the, the most important thing, actually, I want to tell you in this presentation is that you should annotate your public APIs. If you are an author of some kind of library that is used inside your company, uh, your colleagues are using it, or you are an an author of some open source piece and you want people on the internet to start using li your library and you want to get more users, please, please do use type hints for your public APIs. This is the most important slide I would like you to remember from the, this whole talk. And it is so important that I put a reference here to this very slide so you would find it on the internet later. <laughs> so uh, please, if you'd like, take a uh, photons, something like that. Uh, yes, this is th the main idea. Uh, documentation for your public APIs would, will make your users happier because uh, it would act like, uh, first of all, the, the better documentation and it would act like a safety net around your library. Basically, you are defining a clear interface between your code and the user code. And if some kind of error uh, is happening uh, in uh, your library while you, uh, the, your users are using it. They could run a type checker or they ca can just look at the errors in their ID and they will see that they are using it wrongly. They will not report uh, wrong bugs to your tracker just because they don't get, uh, they didn't, uh, they won't get your documentation right. So this is the idea. Uh, types are like better documentation, uh, but uh, for IDs and so on. And uh, as I've already told you, you don't have to annotate everything. Uh, just annotate your, your public API and see if it's good for you. I think that in most cases that would be enough. Um, another tip is start with simple types. In most cases, uh, it is enough to use types like stir, uh, built-in types, int, or, and so on. You can use built-in collection types, like list or dict, and if you want to specify the types of elements inside your collection, please use collection types from the typing module, the uppercase versions, uh, uh, capital case uh, dict, and so on. 
The path forward four, as you know, defines some advanced type constructs as well, by, but use them only when you really need them. And remember that you can always put any if some particular type is tricky and you don't know how to express it or it's too long and so on. So try to stick with uh, simple things. They would be simpler for your users and you won't spend your time <laughs> trying to invent some crazy static typing construct in your code. All right, so another tip is be liberal in what you accept in your functions and conservative in, in what you return. Here's a little piece of code. It's basically a function that iterates over uh, inter iterable of integers and filters out the even elements uh, and returns a list of, it, of them. Here, uh, you are using only the under iter operator on numbers because you are using the generated comprehension in the code. So you don't have to restrict your users to pass a list here, for example, uh, or, or, or an iterator. It is enough to say that uh, the numbers uh, should be an iterable. The most generic type you could probably imagine that would work for this function. And uh, speaking about the return values, in this case, I think you could be quite specific about what you return because you might want to allow your users to use uh, uh, some methods on the concrete type you are returning. For example, here we are returning the list explicitly. Uh, uh, and you might want to allow your users to avoid, for example, the append method or something like that. Uh, note that the typing module defines all kinds of these abstract collection types like mapping or sequence when you can access stuff by index operator, set, and so on. So uh, they are good for your parameters, but uh, they are somewhat less good for your return values. Uh, it depends actually uh, on, on you. All right. Uh, so far, we've seen some type hints written formally using Python 3 functionalizations, right? Uh, and in order to use those annotations, it is enough for the user to just pip install your library. Uh, the type annotations are in the code. They are available. Everything's good. Uh, and this is compatible with Python 2 and uh, some earlier Python versions if you install the typing module from PyPR. Right now, you have to specify typing equals equals 3.5.0 beta 1. Uh, otherwise, you will get just an empty package. But uh, it's, uh, uh, as it, this is because their library is very new and uh, the developers have, uh, hadn't, haven't had the chance to j fix it. Um, all right. And what about Python 2? I guess many of you actually are using Python 2. So here's another quick poll about Python 2 versus Python 3. Four of you are using Python 2. Please raise your hands. 90%, uh, I guess. And who of you are using Python 3? Wow. This is really good. Python 3 is finally coming. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, those of you who still need to support Python 2, there is this thing called Python stops. Uh, just a quick reminder of what they are. They are uh, Python files with the different PYI extension. Uh, and they contain no bodies for methods, just the ellipses, a literal. And here's our little stop for the elementary library, the actual elementary library of the standard library of Python 3.5. Uh, and this is how we should define type hints for the standard library, not by modifying it, obviously, but by writing this kind of stops. And you can use these Python 3 stops with your Python 2 code and the type checkers with, will understand that. So, stops in, uh, for Python 3, code for Python 2. All right, so, uh, stops are very good for annotating not only the standard library, but for third-party libraries as well. Uh, type checkers uh, would expect them to be somewhere on your sys.pass, uh, so um, if you are creating some kind of project that uses lots of third-party libraries and you want to annotate them, in order to get better code completion. Uh, you can just uh, create a folder inside your project, for example, a folder, co folder called type hints, and put your annotations for all the libraries in, in there. Just add it to your sys.path. Uh, and then you can, for example, share this folder as, uh, with the rest of your project using Git or Mercurial or, or whatnot. Uh, and uh, your colleagues uh, will have your type annotations. Um, all right. So, uh, 
if you do that kind of stuff, if you are interested in, created, uh, in creating uh, uh, Python subfiles, please share your stuff with, stuffs with others if you are annotating third-party libraries. There are several ways of doing that. The main is to send a pull request to this new type shared repo. It's the repo mentioned in pep 484, and it is supposed to be the universal collection of all the stops available. Uh, basically, it's m m uh, uh, modeled after the uh, definitely typed repo for the TypeScript, the language that uh, has type hints from uh, its early days. Uh, it's still quite new, but, uh, and uh, this uh, model of creating stops for libraries is very successful. It's very, very well established in the TypeScript community and in the JavaScript community as a whole. For example, people who are still using JavaScript, they uh, use this, uh, they clone this definitely typed repo uh, uh, in TypeScript for their project and check their code against these TypeScript definitions of libraries. So in Python, we will have the same situation where you can actually check your code against this large collection of stuffs for all kinds of libraries. Another way specified in the PEP is to create a package with stops on PyPY and uh, use it. Uh, all right, what if you don't want to invest in writing uh, type hints, either in function annotations or in subs? Then you still can benefit from them. For example, if any of you are PyCharm users, you might not, not know it, but you are already using Python annotations, function annotations. Because in PyCharm, uh, we have this kind of behind the scenes repository of type hints for the standard library. Not all of it, but for some parts. So basically, you are already using type hints, but they are written using our own uh, legacy syntax, and we are going to switch to this new syntax. That's why we are interested in this proposal, and we are contributing to it. We want uh, all the tools to use uh, the same shared collection of stops in order to be more productive as a community. Uh, another way uh, of uh, using uh, stops by other people would be cloning this repo and start using it. All right, so in conclusion, I urge you to try time hits. They are really good. I'm a fan of them, as you probably already know, but they're really good. Uh, and there are a few steps, a few very simple steps, how to, you, you, you can get started with it. Just grab a latest version of Python 3.5 beta, or use uh, some older version of Python 3, and get some of the tools, MyPy or PyCharm, uh, and just start using type hints, try it. Uh, I do want to know your uh, thoughts about it, so please contact me. Here's me on Twitter and my website, pirks.ru. I really want to hear uh, what is your experience with type hints. Do you like it, them? Do you find them uh, good for your users or maybe bad for your users? Uh, are you going to switch to Python 3 with type hints? I'm very interested to hearing uh, all those, those kinds of stuff from you, so please, please contact me. Uh, and uh, the slides are already available on the internet on, uh, via this URL. So thank you for your attention. Very interesting talk from Andre. Um, any questions? Thanks, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm interested if you can do an easy Introspection into the type hints to do like validation for RPC, for example. Uh, for RPC, well, uh, you have to write some kind of tool that we would understand the uh, introspection API of your R RPC library and uh, generate this under uh, those kind of stops. So uh, it's a piece of software that is perfectly valid, and it's a good idea to create this kind of things for 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 your RPC mechanisms. But uh, can you can you use type hints for to do that to to inspect the type hints and do validation based on that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be also a good idea. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. So you said we should all uh, annotate our public APIs, and you also said that PyCharm, for example, has already the tooling to 
uh, infer type hints from the code itself, where right. in some simple cases. Right. Maybe there is also a way to create stops for us because we are lazy to annotate everything? Uh, we are thinking about this kind of feature in PyCharm 5.0, uh, but uh, it's still work in progress. So let's see, uh, we will see what, what is possible here. We are quite good at inferring the return type uh, the return type for functions, but it is very tricky to infer the type of parameters to the function because the only so source of information for parameters, uh, actually there are two sources, the attributes to accessing uh, of the parameter inside the body of the function and the usages of the function, but they are all kind of not so, they contain much less information than you can get for the return type based on according to constructors or literals and so on. So, yeah, we'll see what's possible here. Is it possible to use if branches in subfiles uh, in case, like, f when types are different on Python 2 and type Python 3? Oh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Uh, is it possible to have, like, an if Python 2 in a sub file? Ah, yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah, uh, the PEP44 defines several ways of uh, using conditionals like that, but uh, we don't support them, the, in them in PyCharm 4.5, but we are going to support them in PyCharm 5. Do you think that uh, it would be a good way to pr to provide source compatibility with Python 2 to make tools like 3 to 2 to generate the stub files from the source code instead of repeating yourself and defining the API basically two times? Uh, you mean like um, generating? No, I, I mean targeting Python 3 in development and then generating the, the stub files from the Python 3 source code. Ah, yeah, yeah. It, it is actually a, a very simple task. I, I guess uh, it's a good. It would be a good addition, for example, for the MyPy tool. Yes, yes, it's definitely possible. Hi, is there any effort or project that is, is putting the type hinting on all the standard library? Because uh, it could be a nice party to put it all them and um, when Python 3.5 is released, having all the standard library annotated. Uh, the project is called TypeShed. So TypeShed uh, will eventually has uh, the, uh, the stops for the whole Python 3.5 library and Python 2.7 library. There will be stops for, for the standard library, yes. Uh, as, uh, is there uh, any tool uh, to generate a stop file from uh, doc strings type information? Uh, uh, not, I'm not aware of, of any kind of tool like that. It would be not so hard to create one, but uh, I, I'm not aware of any of these tools. Thank you. So I played around a bit with MyPy, and um, the first thing I looked into was trying to detect if uh, a function returns an optional value, so it can be none or it could be something else. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that MyPy does not currently pick up. Yeah. Uh, yes. Does PyCharm do that, or is uh, that hard? Uh, it, it's a question with some bit of history. We used to support those kind of checks when we still didn't have any type annotations whatsoever, and we used on only the inferred type information. And we used to have these uh, checks when you have to actually uh, write something like if value, and then you would be able to use the value uh, and I, uh, you, are, you will be sure that is, it is not none. But then we received a lot of uh, reports from our users that this is not what they are expecting, what uh, they were expecting from PyCharm because uh, the inference uh, type could be not so accurate. Uh, and if you are explicitly specifying that you are uh, that you are expecting an optional type on or you are returning an optional type right and then using this type then i guess we can trust your annotations because this is what what you are expected to uh, from 
this is the defined behavior of, of your functions, and we will support checking for optional types in PyCharm 5. Any more questions? No? So thanks, him again Thank for the talk. <laughs>